Man, after dealing with all those copyright troubles with Steven Universe the movie, the retrospective, the fucking video that took too long, I'm ready to go back to talk about video games for a while. I don't really know what to talk about next though. I need a game that's short, something that's simple to digest that I can have a fairly easy time talking about. I don't feel like talking about another visual novel just yet, and there's currently not any indie games that have grabbed my attention. Kirby and the Forgotten Land is coming out at the end of March, so maybe I could do a retrospective on Star Allies, but god, I'd probably have so much to talk about with that game. Tell me, what should I make a video on dude? I'm getting desperate at this point! Bruh, just... What about Lugie Spooky Kondo? You know what? Sure, why not? You... you want to be a part of it? I mean, I don't have ballet practice till 5, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, I haven't been too much of a Luigi's Mansion fan, but I always did admire it as a series. The only game I had ever played up to this point was Dark Moon, and I still have fond memories of it. I know people don't like its mission based structure and pacing due to EGAT's constant phone calling, but for my first experience with Luigi's Mansion, I had a lot of fun with it and played the game a bunch. Even the Scarescraper was a really addicting mode to me, and I played that thing a lot. I can probably look back and notice all of its flaws now, but I still have a positive view of it. I never picked up 3, and I don't know why I never did. I guess I just didn't have the motivation, and $60 is a lot for a video game, man. I gotta make sure to pick my games wisely. I say as I spent $60 on Pokemon Legends Arceus, and still I barely touched it. I named my Shinx Skittles, and I pretty much won the game as far as I was concerned. If I wanted to play the original Luigi's Mansion though, I'd have to find a copy of the game while buying a GameCube controller. But also, I could download this dolphin onto my computer and play it that way. If it makes y'all feel any better, Tevi has a copy of the game, and he gave me a pass. Oh, and since you're still here, Tevi, why don't you talk about your origins with this game? Unlike other early owners of the GameCube, I wasn't able to experience Luigi's Mansion until I got into middle school. As a kid, I saw a bunch of gameplay videos and let's plays on the game and always wanted to try it out for myself. I remember getting the game like it was yesterday. It was around 2012 and a new retro game store opened up in my hometown. My mom took me over to check it out and I was able to grab the game, along with Shadow the Hedgehog and Disney Sing It for the Wii. Don't judge, I was a big Disney kid. I played the game over and over for weeks. It was so good I couldn't put it down. Ever since then I've made it my duty to play Luigi's Mansion at least once a year, usually around Halloween time. The first game is the only one I have any experience with though. I remember playing a bit of Dark Moon over at my cousin's house, but not enough to get a solid opinion on it. But our previous experiences don't really matter since our focus for today is solely on the first game. With my personal experience, I guess you can say I know what I'm doing, so it's a good thing I'm here, because ED doesn't know shit. Hey man, I watched Shugga's OP of the game... several years ago. Now as I started things up, the first thing I did was watch the Pikmin trailer featured in this game, because I'm cultured like that. But I feel like nowadays, pretty much everyone knows the setup to Luigi's Mansion. Luigi wins a mansion in a contest that he didn't even sign up for, he tells Mario about the contest, and the two decide to meet up at the mansion later that evening, Mario is the first to arrive in the place and ends up getting captured by the ghost and turned into a painting, still so leaving it to Luigi to save him. It's a simple setup, but a novel one that works. This game however did give us instruction to Professor E. Gad, an adventure that's designed the Portuguese 3000, the device we use to capture ghosts. Egad's always been a favorite Mario character of mine over the years. He's a fun take on the mad scientist with a funny voice. He's essentially the tech genius of the Mario universe, and I wish he got more appearances honestly. Besides Luigi's Mansion, he's only in other spin-offs like Mario and Luigi, and is slightly alluded to in games like Sunshine. Put him in a mainline game, you cowards! He teaches us how to use the portrait ghost by putting us through this quick training where we fight some basic ghosts, which makes for a good time to talk about the combat system. From my memories of Dark Moon, the original game's combat certainly feels very different. To stun a ghost, you gotta focus your flashlight at them to reveal their heart, and then start sucking them up to drain down their HP. It took a little bit to get used to shining at ghosts, but I eventually got used to it. You either gotta face them with your flashlight, or turn on your flashlight at the right time. Compared to Dark Moon, I think I prefer how stunning enemies worked in that game with a charge attack, because with some enemies in this game, going from the light to vacuum could feel a bit finicky, like I'd flash them and then pull out the vacuum, but they sometimes just disappear in between that process. Not a big deal, but something I started to notice by the end. My favorite part about the combat though, is actually sucking in the ghost. To drain a ghost's HP, you gotta keep pulling back against it. You can even wiggle the stick a bunch to drain the HP faster. During this, the ghost is gonna desperately try to escape by moving all around, and you gotta continue to change your direction on the analog stick in the opposite direction. 
it really feels like a struggle to keep control, and in a good way. You have no idea how satisfying it is to capture something like a portrait ghost in one turn. There's a bunch of different types of enemies to be on the lookout for throughout the game, which I don't feel like explaining, so uh, take it away, Tevi. Tevi, oops. <laughs> you have your basic gold ones that try to punch you, these pink ones that do the same thing with more health, these banana ghosts that don't know how to pick up after themselves, the big blue ones that ground slam you, there are shy guy ghosts with pitchforks, these grabber ghosts that squeeze you harder than Aunt Phyllis at a family reunion, and some skeleton ghosts as well. There are even some low health ghosts that just have more unique ways to attack, like this bowling ghost or these guys that hang from the ceiling and try to scare you. You'll run into all these types throughout your adventure, and the game will always keep you on your feet with different combinations. Some of the basic types even have elemental weaknesses that you need to exploit. This should never be a problem, since for the most part the game will allow you to obtain the element you need to fight these guys so there aren't any big gotcha moments when it comes to that. From our tutorial, the game follows a pretty linear setup. You enter a room and rummage around for various types of collectibles and ghosts. Once the entire room is cleared out of spirits, the lights will turn on and a chest will spawn. The chest will usually contain either the key of the next room, a plot important item, or some various treasure. You can have Luigi shake and search furniture and other structures in the mansion to locate items, activate certain switches, and reveal different ghosts for you to catch. Luigi can even collect different elemental metals that allow him to harness fire, water, and ice to solve even more puzzles. You tend not to do the exact same thing in each room, and every encounter always has something new to offer, whether that be through the new room layout or what types of ghosts the game will throw at you. Luigi also has access to the Game Boy Horror, which he can use to scan various objects. The most novel use for this thing is that when you scan objects, Luigi will usually give some sort of comment towards it. It's your only way of seeing him have actual dialogue in this game, and that alone makes it a pretty fascinating addition. I kinda forget to do this a lot of the time, since it's a bit of an out of your way thing to do, but it's there if you want to get more out of this game. A feature of it that I keep forgetting too is that if you scan a mirror, it'll warp you back to the opening room of the mansion. It can cut down the team of travel a good amount. You can also scan portrait ghosts to hear what they're thinking, which is also a cool touch. These types of ghosts are the ones you should be focused on. These guys take on more humanoid forms and are scattered throughout the mansion. Catching them usually involves solving some sort of puzzle. For example, with Neville in Area 1, you need to wait until he yawns to expose his heart to stun him. Or with ghosts like Melody or Jarvis, you need to play a small minigame to get them to expose themselves that way. Each portrait ghost has their own way of becoming vulnerable, but some of them require you to get a bit more physical. Speaking of Area 1, it's kind of like a tutorial for portrait ghosts. It primarily consists of this hallway with two rooms that have easy to understand portrait ghosts, and then a boss fight against a baby. This is a pretty good first boss. All you gotta do is avoid its attacks until you can smack its face with a ball, and then get to sucking. As a kid, however, this baby creeped the hell out of me, specifically its crying animation. The way its mouth stretched plus the loud baby yells were quite unsettling to me, but I guess that helps make this fight all the more memorable. Still though, not even the baby is immune to the suck. Area 1 is overall a pretty good start to the game, and yes, I got the doors mixed up and end up opening the fake one. This area also introduces you to some of the rarest ghosts in the game, the speedy spirits and the golden mice. These ghosts are only found in set locations while the room is still dark. Speedy spirits tend to hide in specific pieces of furniture, and once you reveal them, they start zipping around the room like a 4 year old getting V-Bucks for Christmas. If you fail to catch them in time, or if they disappear from a Bosch flashlight stun, they are gone forever. The only way you can get them is by resetting the game and trying again. Well, guess what I'm doing. They are challenging to catch, but once you do, you're rewarded with tons of cash and gemstones to add to your collection. The same goes for the golden mice, but they work a bit differently. Golden mice can be spawned by scanning pieces of cheese with your Game Boy Horror. Some of them randomly appear in certain locations though, so if you happen to come across them, grab them as quickly as possible. While taking the chance on these two types can cause some minor frustration, catching them is incredibly satisfying, and it's a great risk and reward system to get you some extra cash. Oh yeah, cash is a thing. Scattered throughout the mansion is lots and lots of treasure for Luigi to find. These can range from coins and bills, to gold bars and pearls, and to the rarer gems like sapphires, rubies, emeralds, and different varieties of diamonds. Money is not required to beat the game, but the more money you collect, the better rank you will have at the end of the game. Sure, all you get is a fancy picture of your new house, but getting a fucking 10 is so demoralizing, man. I want to live in a fancy condo with the big boys. To be fair though, it is extremely hard to get the tent rank. You actively have to try and avoid collecting money to reach it. Man, I wish I was Luigi. It's hard for him to be poor. Area 2 of the game is when the mansion properly opens up, with the first floor of the game now being accessible. It's still pretty linear with what rooms you're allowed to go into, but there's a better feeling to exploring these rooms because they're connected through a long stream of hallways instead of a small one. There's some unique rooms here that spice up the combat, like this one where you can only see the ghosts in the mirror. The mirrors in this game do be looking nice.
These portrait ghosts as well are a lot more diverse since the ones from the first area were just two parents and a baby. I really like this butler guy who's walking through the hallways until you light up his candles. He makes the weirdest sounds, but it oddly makes it one that sticks out of my brain. Melody was another favorite for her room being all about music, and she even plays a song from an early Mario game. It feels kinda bad sucking some of these ghosts up, but that's just my job here, so get in my vacuum. In Area 2, we end up releasing the Boos since of course they are a thing in this game, but they work differently compared to the rest. A Boo is located in nearly all the rooms of the game, and you can only start finding it once the room is lit up. That little radar on your Game Boy Horror acts as a way of tracking how close you are to it. When it's red, you'll want to inspect the object you're at, and hope that it's a Boo, and not one of those stupid Boo Balls or Bombs. Once the boo is revealed, it's time to start sucking, but you have a lot less to grab compared to the other ghosts. It's hard to describe, but you drain its HP by putting your vacuum gust over the boo as it gets magnetized to you. It'll slowly move away as this is happening, and it's the only type of ghost that can leave the room it's from. If it leaves to a hallway, you simply encounter it again, but if it leaves to another room, you gotta find it all over again and pray that this is the time you catch it. You'll need to collect every ghost in the game, but doing that will get you a gold diamond, which is the highest value gem in the game. The concept is fine on its own, but over the course of the game, it slowly grows more tiring, especially if you have bad luck and have the boost escape you all the time. At least the boss of this area is sweet. Bachmeyer has a cool look to him while having a pretty neat concept of making him absorb these clones to give the real version an actual form to suck on. ED, would you please stop saying it like that? Although this is two bosses in a row where to damage it, you have to spit back objects it puts on the field. Eh, whatever, I still like it. And as I tally up more scores from all the ghost hunting, we can move on to Area 3. Area 3 is another solid area. Each of the portrait ghosts here have really unique encounters, and I really like the general structure of the area itself. You can head down to the well outside to get a peek into the final room, where King Boo has Mario's painting hung up on a wall. If I recall correctly, I think this is the only time Mario ever talks for that long, or even at all. So it's nice to know he'll actually speak up when his life is in danger. This area has a lot more diverse rooms and puzzles to solve compared to previous areas. You got ghosts like Biff Atlas over here just working out all by himself in the dark- Bro, no wonder you died, dumbass. And Henry and Orville, Chauncey's twin brothers, who play a game of hide and seek with Luigi, only for them to be sore losers and try to blow Luigi up. We also finish collecting all of Mario's lost items to give to Madame Clairvoya, who just kind of tells you stuff you already know, but she is required, so she's going in the suck suck box. Areas 2 and 3 are certainly the highlight areas of the game for me. One of the coolest rooms in the third area was the observatory, because of how surreal it feels. You even get to shoot the moon, and not do other actions that I thought of. Afterwards, we can head up to the roof and fight the Area 3 boss, Bulasis. Holy shit, Bulasis. In order to beat him, you need to drag him over to these unicorn statues with the poltergeist to pop him into a bunch of smaller boos, and then use ice to freeze them in place and capture them. Sounds easy, right? NOPE! It is by far the hardest thing you will do in this game. Oh sure, it learns you into a false sense of security early on with the easy to catch boos, but once you get to boo number 11, they suddenly remember their boos and start running away like a bunch of little pansies when you try to freeze them. Then you spend the next 10 minutes hunting down the last one because mom boo number 5 over here doesn't want to go to Chunky e. Cheese for his birthday party. You get in the goddamn vacuum cleaner, buddy. You're going into the ball pit whether you like it or not. Then there's area 4. Sweet baby Jesus, I am so mixed on this area. Before you can make any real progress, a large lightning bolt strikes the mansion causing a blackout. During the blackout, a shit ton of ghosts spawn all over the place and it becomes really easy to get overwhelmed. Overwhelmed? It should have been annoying how many ghosts spawn, and every time they do, Luigi has to go through a shocked animation where he stands still, which can make moving through some rooms a needless drag. I know I should go straight down to the basement or show the power, but I want those extra speedy spurs that only appear during the blackout. Call me greedy, but I want the cash. There's another portrait ghost you gotta take care of during this named Uncle Grimly and oops, already sucked him. I got the power back on and was finally done with that segment. <sighs> I'm gonna drink some water. You, you can do your talking, Tabby. After that, we head back up to the top of the mansion, only to go through two rooms and then we need to head back down to the bottom to go through two rooms and then head back upstairs. Are you seeing a pattern here? Up and down and up and down. I wasn't aware we were playing Luigi's Catholic Church. Not only that, but remember how the booze in the Area 3 boss love running away from you? Well, they must have relayed their strategy to their brothers because not only do these boos never stop fucking moving, but almost all the Area 4 boos have 300 health! Don't be surprised if you're constantly going back and forth between rooms and hallways just to get one of these guys. Or they could just dick you over for 5 minutes while they're stuck at 0 HP and then dip into a late area room that you can't get to just to be a douche. 
Okay, but watching that happen was pretty funny. Like, damn, dude, you really couldn't suck it one more time? Edie, shut the fuck up. This was definitely the part of the game where I started to get somewhat burnt out and ready for the end. Area 4 isn't all that bad, as I like to know where the portrait goes here, but the back and forth travel Tebby described was wearing on me, even with the mirrors to teleport back to the foyer. Also, god, those boosts just start to pad out the last part of this game. I think 200 is the highest their health should have reached. 300 just makes things take longer than they need to. And now I'm noticing how ironic it is that boosts are the weakest part of the Mario game about a haunted mansion. Huh. Anyways, I called up the portrait ghost, called up the booze, watered this plant to get another gold diamond, don't ask about the logistics. I was finally ready to take on the last boss of this game. By far the best encounter of the game is with King Boo himself. After capturing all the portrait ghosts, Luigi manages to find his way down to King Boo's shrine for the final confrontation. He ends up trapping Luigi in a painting of Bowser, which leads to an arena on the top of the mansion with a fiery background and eerie as hell music. King Boo doesn't exactly fight you head on despite what he just said a few seconds ago. Instead, he pilots this giant Bowser suit here. This is a great final boss and a perfect way to end the game in my opinion. You need to use these spike bombs to blow Bowser's head off to reveal King Boo. While you're trying to catch him, the Bowser head will act on its own and try to freeze you, so just be mindful of your surroundings. Sometimes the head will put itself on backwards and start running around the area like a dumbass, and I think it's just the funniest thing. By far one of my favorite final bosses of all time. It's not the greatest out there, but I really like it. Dude, this fight legit kicked my ass the first time I played it. I think my issue was that I had a hard time sucking in the spiked balls he launched at me, plus I would keep getting hit by his jump attack. I didn't think about how being so far away would activate that move. I ended up getting my first game over too, but I reset the game as soon as it happened, so really, it, it doesn't count. Figured out how to do it in my second try, and yeah, this is a rad final boss and note for the game to go out on. And the ending cutscene of Mario coming back is really nice. I love how Luigi laughs and has tears of joy seeing Mario return. It's such an interesting and unique reaction they gave Luigi, but that's why I find it so memorable. It's just another showcase of the charm that this game has. That's really what this game excelled at for me throughout my playthrough. The charm. Mechanically, this game is nothing too deep. It's beatable in just a few hours, and there are actual horror games out there that excel better at exploration and puzzle solving, but I still get why so many are fond of this game all these years later. This game basically formed Luigi's identity into what it is today. Before, he was just the player too, the green Mario, but this game turned him into the lovable coward and underdog we all know him as today. Now the Haunted Mansion and Ghost aesthetics are simply a part of Luigi's identity, and it's something that his brother doesn't have. What about you, Mr. Tevi Bear? Luigi's Mansion is a game I hold really close to my heart. It's a game that made Luigi my favorite Mario character, and the game that sort of helped pave the way for me to try other survival horror games. Sure, I've only gotten to Resident Evil 2 Remake, but hey, I'll say it counts for paving the way. The game has a fantastic atmosphere, pretty good pacing throughout with a few exceptions, and it's technically solid. There isn't really much I can complain about, boo hunting aside, that could prevent me from recommending this to someone who's never played it before. If you can manage to find a copy, you could play the game on the GameCube, or if you already own the game, you can play it off of Dolphin like we did. If neither of those are an option for you, you can buy the 3DS remake that was released in 2019. From what I've seen, it's a very faithful remake and it even adds a few new features, such as a boss rush, a new level of ranking for bosses, a new version of the hidden mansion, and even multiplayer. Don't... with the multiplayer, please. Save yourself some pain. I can see myself going back to this game at some point. It's a weirdly endearing time that I can now scratch off my bucket list of classic games I've never played. Well, since ED didn't give me a proper send off, I'm taking his outro to plug my stuff. First of all though, thank you ED for having me on for this, I had a lot of fun doing this video. If you guys want to see more of my stupid ass, check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tevi underscore bear. If you want to see what stupid shit I talk about, check out my Twitter, at TevyBear. Oh, and uh, subscribe to ED, I guess. I don't fucking know.